In music, an interval is a measure of distance between two notes. You've likely already heard of tones and semitones, basically a movement of one or two frets on a guitar or one or two keys on a piano, for example. But looking further, it quickly gets confusing when you talk about trying to make like a three and a half tone jump on an instrument, and that's where proper interval names come in. Intervals give specific names containing a number, and just like using measurements in real life such as feet or meters, the larger the number, the bigger the distance. For example, a major seventh is a larger interval than a perfect fourth. Now as you'll notice, you get given more information in the interval name than just the number. You'll hear them referred to as major, minor, perfect, augmented, diminished, all of these confusing terms. So in this video, we're gonna demystify the entire interval system and help you make sense of all of this terminology. Looking slightly further ahead, once you have a good understanding of intervals, they essentially become the language that you use to talk about and think about music theory from here onwards. In my opinion, they're very much a gateway to a higher understanding of music, which is why I've put them right at the start of this intermediate theory course, because we're going to be using interval names to explain concepts throughout. So definitely worth persevering with, and you can find the link to the full course in the description below. But for now, let's dive into the details of these intervals. So in this video, we're going to keep it simple and just look at intervals within an octave. So that's going to feature the intervals numbered up to the seventh, because when we reach the octave, the eighth step, that's where the cycle starts again from the next root note. If you're not clued up on octaves and root notes, do check out the theory lessons in my beginner course, which is also linked below. Now, intervals beyond an octave do exist. They're called compound intervals, but we're not going to worry about those just yet. So starting from the very bottom, the first note we're going to look at is known as the root note or tonic. Think of this like the starting square on a board game and the interval or distance you move from this point would be how many steps along the board you take. Now, as I mentioned, all the following intervals are numbered. So second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. But for some reason, you don't really hear the root note referred to as the first. It just doesn't seem to be part of the terminology. So best stick to calling it either a root or the tonic. Moving on to the seconds, and now is a good time to explain that intervals often come in pairs whereby you get a major and a minor version of the interval. So the major version is always one semitone larger than the minor version. So when it comes to seconds, a minor second is the smallest interval that you can move by. It's the equivalent of a semitone or a one fret movement on guitar. Whereas a major second is the equivalent of a tone or a two fret movement on a guitar. Thirds also follow the major and minor pattern. So a minor third is one note higher than a major second, and then a major third is one note higher than a minor third. And quick nugget of info, thirds are what control the tonality of chords and scales. So major type chords and scales are major because they contain a major third, and minor type chords and scales are minor because they contain a minor third. So that's just a quick snippet, but we've got plenty more chord and scale construction stuff coming up in the next few lessons. Now fourths are where the pattern starts to change. We don't have major and minor when it comes to fourths, we simply have a perfect fourth and then a tone higher than that we have a perfect fifth. Now this leaves this extra note in between the fourth and fifth which has a really sort of clashy dissonant sound. If I play it on guitar it sounds like this. Now this note has many names, you might hear it called an augmented fourth augment mean to make larger, so one larger than the fourth, or you might just hear it called a sharp four. Alternatively, we could hear it called a diminished fifth, diminished meaning to make smaller, or a flat five. Now it also has a couple of nicknames. It's known as a tritone because it's three tones away from the root note. And it's also been branded as the devil's interval because there was this rumor that it used to be banned in church in the olden days because it's so dissonant. Now, apparently this is total nonsense, but remembering that fact might still help you memorize the sound of the interval. Also, if you've looked at blues scales by adding a blue note to your minor pentatonic, the blue note is also the same interval. So I'm hoping this actually makes intervals seem less confusing because all of these terms just relate to the same thing. And also just a quick word on the fifths. So the fifth is the interval involved in a power chord. So if you've been using chord charts and tabs, you might have seen power chords referred to as five chords, for example, an A5. It's just because the fifth interval is the one involved in a power chord. 
The remaining intervals then go back to the more simple major and minor system. So upwards from the fifth, we'd have the minor sixth, then the major sixth, then the minor seventh, then the major seventh. Now the major seventh is the largest interval that you can have before reaching the octave again. So that gives us all 12 notes of the musical system. So just to clarify the whole lot, our starting point is the root note or tonic, and upwards from there, we're moving to a minor second or a major second, which are the same as a semitone or a tone. Then we have the minor third and major third, which control the major or minorness of chords and scales. Following that, we have the perfect fourth, then the next step is the dodgy one right in the middle. This is the sharp four, flat five, tritone, devil's interval, blue note, whatever you want to call it. Upwards from that, we have the perfect fifth, which is the one included in a power chord. Then we have the minor sixth, major sixth, minor seventh, major seventh, and then reaching the octave again. So hopefully that all makes sense. And now there's just a couple of extra details that I want to talk about when it comes to intervals. So one thing that's really important to get your head around is that the note letter always changes with the interval number. For example, if we're in the key of C, so C is the root note, then the seconds must be Ds of some sort. So if C is the root, we couldn't call the minor second C sharp, we'd have to call it D flat because it's a different number, and then the major second would just be D natural. Likewise, the minor third would have to be E flat, not D sharp, because C is the root, the seconds are Ds, the thirds are Es, so therefore the major third would just be an E natural, and then this would continue, so the fourth would be F, and the fifth would be G, and then the tritone, we could either call it F sharp or G flat, depending on whether you wanted to think of it as a sharp four or a flat five. Uh, then upwards from there, the sixths would be As, and the sevenths would be Bs, and then we'd be up to the octave, which would be C again. That's why you have both options of the sharp of one note or the flat of another, so you can always select the correct option for the key that you're in. Now just to round this video off, we're going to actually put the intervals onto an instrument. So you can do this with whatever instrument you're playing, obviously I'm going to demonstrate it on guitar. So you're basically going to pick a note and then name all the intervals until you get to an octave, just to make sure that you've really got it down. So on guitar I'm going to demonstrate this in the key of E, so we're going to start from the open low E string, the lowest note on the instrument. So that's going to be our root note, the E. Then the first fret is going to be the minor second, which is an F. Second fret is a major second, which is an F sharp. Third fret is the minor third, which is a G. Fourth fret is a major third, which is a G sharp. The fifth fret is the fourth, which is an A. Then we have the sharp four or flat five on the sixth fret, so either A sharp or B flat. The seventh fret is the perfect fifth, which is a B. The eighth fret is the minor sixth, which is a C. The ninth fret is a major sixth, which is a C sharp. The tenth fret is a minor seventh, which is a D natural. And then the eleventh fret is a major seventh, the largest interval before the octave, which is a D sharp. And then of course the double dots, we're back to the root note an octave higher, which is the E. So I do think it helps to name the notes as well and then you start to make extra associations, but just make sure you've got all the interval names in the right order. So now you understand how the interval system works and what all of those confusing terms mean. So in the next lesson, we're gonna look at interval references so you can learn what each interval actually sounds like and train your ears to recognize them in songs. Then following that, we're gonna look at how you can combine different intervals to create the different scales and chords. Remember, the full intermediate theory course is linked in the description below, and you'll also find the link to my Patreon page where I've got some extra resources and further reading on these topics. Be sure to subscribe for more content and give the video a like if you found it helpful, and I'll see you in the next lesson.